the first thing we probably need to do is to define what a database actually is. A database is a shared collection of logically related data. It's recorded in a way that allows an organization or even yourself to make effective use of that data. Now that data could in theory be just raw, unstructured data, such as a stream of emails coming into an organization. Or it could be data that has been digested, stored, and uh, aligned in a nice tight format within a software system that then allows us to manipulate and analyze the data properly. And then it allows us to carry out complex functionality upon it. The more common phrase often seen on CVs is an RDBMS system. So RDBMS, and this just really means relational database management system. So generally, what we think of as the database is in actual fact the RDBMS software. And this is the software which we overlay on top of any raw data that might come into an organization so that it allows the users to store, view, refine and maintain the data in a structured way. So think of RDBMS and databases being the same thing, but I want you to realize that essentially all of the things you see on CVs in terms of products are RDBMS systems, which is software that are database systems software. So the way to think about this is that in its rawest form, data is just a pool of unstructured data, but that RDBMS software allows the structuring of that data and thus allows the end user to query and analyze the data for meaningful business purposes. Systems like Oracle, for example. It's a worthwhile investment of our time if we briefly explore how things were back in history before we've ever got to RDBMS and how things evolved into the modern RDBMS systems we know today. Because of course, it wasn't always like this. The very first databases were way back in the mid 60s and they were simply known as flat file databases. This meant that there were no really relational database capabilities within the data itself. Effectively, a flat file database was simply the equivalent of having all of your data recorded on paper. Um, the only difference being that instead of on paper, the data was now just recorded electronically on a flat storage media. Now, if you needed to do a search of any sort, it was the same as if you were going through paper, you were just literally doing the same in an electronic format. Usually you would need to print out all of the database, scan it manually for the information you needed, um, but there were no real complex search capabilities within the data in the way we think of today. The data was stored in a plain text file. And this meant that there were no complex querying capabilities. This also meant that there was very little in the way of security, as pretty much to do any search, every user could, do, could see all of the data. An example of one of these early systems was one created by IBM, and it was called Sabre. Believe it or not, this was commercially used by the American Airlines company for their ticketing system. And actually, it was thought of as highly innovative back in the day. But again, in this database, the data items were isolated in the sense that there were no sophisticated relational links recorded between the data items. Meaning that you couldn't easily carry out a search, for example, for all the female passengers flying to Chicago between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Tuesday with the name Christine. Then as we moved into the 1970s, a new concept was introduced, and this was driven primarily by an IBM employee called Edgar Codd. He proposed a theory that suggested that we could possibly create systems in the future which would store data in tables rather than in flat file in such a way as to record links and relationships between the data entities. An earlier version of this database was one called Ingress, and this was created at Berkeley University. Believe it or not, you might even see Ingress coming up on CVs at some point. And this database was driven by a language. That original language was called Quell, Q-U-E-L. 
And this language quell would, of course, for the first time allow the querying of the data in much more complex ways. This would, of course, be the front runner, the forerunner to the mighty SQL. The people started to refer to those early databases as being networked databases because the data had started to be networked together and being weaved together in terms of relationships. Those early network databases then evolved into what we currently refer to as hierarchical databases and, and they were really the forerunner to the true relational database management systems we have today. These were systems in which a parent and a child relationship between two pieces of data could be established, i.e. where one piece of data was born from another. And you do this every day. For example, a candidate with the name Jane Smith has a piece of data, a sub-piece of data called her date of birth. Now that date of birth piece of data could not exist independently of the parent item Jane Smith. At around this time, the IBM database called System R was built around this paradigm. And this used a language which stemmed from Quell and which they wanted to call SQL, Structured English Querying Language. However, this name had to be abbreviated to SQL because of a trademark conflict with a UK-based company that had a product already called SQL. So this is important. Now at this point, you're probably leaning into the screen and waiting in anticipation for me to dive into all of those SQL-based terms because you've heard tons of these and you need clarification. This is why you're on this course. What in blazes is my SQL, no SQL, uh, PL SQL? And why, do some, why the hell do some people say SQL when others say SQL? Don't worry. All in good time, my little pad ones all in good time. From hierarchical, the final concept of RDBMS systems began. Databases were, that were designed to replicate human knowledge, linking all the pieces of data in a relational manner. So there was always an implicit link between them. That was a bit of history. Let's also pin down this one other idea. So the next thing to understand is that all modern relational database systems rely on a collection of tables. Tables are at the heart of RDBMS function.